Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Antediluvian World When we're talking about pre-flood civilizations, what we're really discussing is something called the Antediluvian World. This world was supposedly composed of advanced civilizations that may have even surpassed our own. But when the Great Flood came, these civilizations were annihilated. Almost all traces of them were destroyed, and then the New World began. According to the Bible, it was God who sent the Great Flood to wipe mankind from the face of the earth. This was punishment for man's mistakes and sinful lives, and so these great civilizations were obliterated. There's obviously a lot of contradictory information. Scientists agree there was a Great Flood that could have wiped out cities over 2,000 years ago, and many civilizations have a flood myth. But there has never actually been physical proof of a utopian society or any kind of society any more advanced than we are now. And yet the people who lived in the antediluvian world were supposedly superhuman. It's said that before the flood, human beings lived to be about 1,000 years old. Also, people possessed a higher level of intelligence. There are even some theories that say the Nephilim of the Bible were actually the first humans to build civilizations before the flood wiped them out. I am excited to announce that today's video is sponsored by MyHeritage. Since you watch Origins Explained, I'm sure you love hearing about the past. But what about your own? With MyHeritage, you can learn about your very own origins. MyHeritage is one of the leading services in family history and genealogy. They make it easy to build your family tree and find out more about your relatives and their achievements. They have an extensive archive of over 18 billion historical records at your disposal, with a unique system of instant discoveries and smart matches to help you learn more about where you came from. Even if you don't have that much information, MyHeritage is a fun and easy way to find distant relatives you maybe didn't even know about. They also offer a DNA testing service that allows you to discover new members of your family tree and where your ancestors came from. Just by putting in some basic information, MyHeritage connected me with other family members to help fill out my tree and showed me immigration documents going back to the 1600s. I was even able to find out that some of my family members fought in the Revolutionary War. This is a pretty fun experience, especially since they have an amazing feature that allows you to colorize, enhance, and repair old photos through the MyHeritage Color Enhancement tab. You can even animate your photos, which is incredible! I was amazed to see my grandmother and great-grandmother moving and even talking. Color and animation helps to bring out details in photos and really humanizes your ancestors so you can imagine them alive and what their life was like. Sign up for a 14-day free trial and enjoy all the amazing features MyHeritage has to offer. If you decide to continue your subscription, you'll get a 50% discount. Check out the description box below for more details. Number 9. The People of the Sphinx Recent evidence has come to light that the Great Sphinx of Egypt may actually be twice as old as mainstream archaeologists believe. The narrative right now is that the Great Sphinx was built 4,500 years ago, during the reign of Pharaoh Khafre, and around the same time as the Great Pyramid. But it may have actually been built 7,000 years ago, long before any biblical flood. The Sphinx itself is formed from blocks of carved limestone. It's about 240 feet long, standing guard in front of the necropolis of Giza. Most archaeologists would say the Sphinx was built as part of the pyramid complex. But the pyramids may have been built around the Sphinx because it was already there. We know based on the erosion of the limestone that the monument spent at least 700 years buried in the sand. At some point, it had to be dug out of the desert sand like a lost artifact. We don't know if it was the ancient Egyptians who dug it out of the sand 4,500 years ago, or if it was done later. Then there's the matter of the erosion on top of the Sphinx. It looks like the erosion is caused by rainfall, yet this type of erosion doesn't appear anywhere else in the area. That's because there is very little rain in Egypt. And so, if the Sphinx was indeed eroded by rain over thousands of years, it must have been built when Egypt's weather patterns were different. This would place it at a minimum of 7,000 years old. None of this is proven, and it's all mostly speculation. But if it turns out to be true, it would mean the Sphinx was built by an earlier, pre-flood civilization even older than the Egyptians. Number 8. Under the Black Sea Scientists have just discovered the remains of an ancient human settlement hiding underneath the Black Sea. 
This is authentic, documented evidence of ancient humans who thrived on a prehistoric shoreline before it was swallowed by the Great Flood thousands of years ago. It was Dr. Robert D. Ballard who helped to discover the surprisingly well-preserved structure 12 miles off the coast of Turkey. You might not know his name, but Dr. Ballard is the same undersea explorer who used robotic devices to find the resting place of the Titanic. This guy is the one to call if you want something found in the ocean. An underwater robot was used to look about 300 feet under the surface when it found a rectangular area of collapsed wood and formed clay. This area was part of a settlement, and the sea floor was scattered with artifacts, carved wooden beams, stone implements, and the ruins of a mud foundation. The expedition was sponsored by the National Geographic Society as part of a project searching for human settlements that were wiped out by the historical flood. The purpose of this expedition was to find a pre-flood civilization, and they did it! The only thing now is trying to figure out who these people were. The experts had to look at seashells to help date the structure, putting it back about 7,000 years ago. That was about the time a significant change happened in the area, and the Black Sea changed from a freshwater lake to a saltwater sea. The only explanation is a flood, and that flood must have been huge if it buried this lost settlement under 300 feet of water. And now for number 7. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Maggie Mae and Scared of Whales. Thanks so much for watching and supporting this channel. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join us. Number 7. Tiwanaku Machu Picchu may be the most famous place in Peru these days, and the Inca may be the most notorious civilization in this part of the world. But Tiwanaku was the real spiritual center of the Andes. It's in ruins these days, with very little of the old architecture left. And yet, what is still standing is quite important. It's useful to understand that just a few miles away is the legendary Lake Titicaca, home of many creation myths in thousands and thousands of years of Andean culture. This was the core of all religion and everything sacred in ancient Peru. The lost city of Tiwanaku is important because the structures remaining seem to have been built much earlier than other places in the area. There are the Puma Punku ruins, which were built with such impressive stonework, modern archaeologists don't even know how it was done. The stones fit so perfectly together, not even a piece of paper can get through. And then there's the Gateway of the Sun, which some believe used to be a portal to another world. Finally, there's the Flood Myth, the Andean legend of Viracocha, the creator god. The legend says that after a great cataclysm, when an enormous flood swept through the area and demolished civilization, Viracocha rose from Lake Titicaca to begin humanity again. It's basically the biblical flood, only told in South America thousands of years ago. There are some who believe that Tiwanaku was built before the flood and only survived because it was so high in the mountains. Number 6. The Garden of Eden Gobekli Tepe is the oldest and one of the most mysterious archaeological sites in the world. Located in Turkey, it dates back to over 10,000 years old. This was definitely built by a pre-flood civilization. Some mysterious group of people, even before writing was invented, before the wheel, and before anyone knew how to plant crops, built a monumental structure. Gobekli Tepe is massive, a megalithic feat of architecture that even predates the use of pottery. This thing is older than any other man-made structure in the world. There are some researchers who believe it could be the actual site of the Garden of Eden from the Bible. Biblical researchers have long believed the Garden of Eden was somewhere near ancient Mesopotamia. And while there is no way to prove it, the pieces seem to fit. The complex is built of at least 43 different megaliths, huge pillars that are over 16 feet tall. Plus, evidence from geophysical surveys shows there could be more, as many as 250 more, lying buried in the dirt near the site. 10,000 years ago, this could have been the first temple of man, occupied only by Adam and Eve. If biblical speculation is to be believed, this could be the actual place where the first race of humans began before the flood thousands of years later. Number 5. Atlantis The story of Atlantis is thousands of years old. It was immortalized by the Greek philosopher Plato, who described a city inhabited by a great and highly advanced civilization. This civilization became so advanced and so proud of itself that the gods smote them for their arrogance. They were destroyed in just one night by a great disaster. 
Within moments, the entire city of Atlantis was plunged into the sea. It's easy to see the correlation between Atlantis and Noah's Ark. We can also see it in the Hawaiian mythology of Nu, the Ark Builder. Almost every civilization wrote of a great flood and the rebirth of the world afterward. The story of Atlantis even fits in with the timeline of when that may have happened. According to geological studies, there was indeed a catastrophic event at the end of the Ice Age when the world could have been flooded. This would have happened about 11,600 years ago. The date Plato gives for the destruction of Atlantis is 9,600 BC, or around 11,600 years ago. Plus, scientists have already confirmed that physiologically and anatomically speaking, people from back then would have been similar to us. They would have had the same intellect as us. And so, even though we don't know if Atlantis existed, the whole concept of an advanced race of people back then being wiped out by a flood is plausible. Number 4. The Chitata Wall The Chitata Wall is on Hooper Farm, about 13 miles from Cleveland, Tennessee. In the summer of 1891, Isaac Hooper was out one day doing some work on his farm when he came across a stone sticking about six inches out of the ground. This was only one of many stones making up a mysterious wall that had been buried on his farm. He ended up digging the wall out and discovered a baffling length of stonework over three times longer than a football field. This thick wall in the middle of rural Tennessee seemed like it had no purpose. It was covered in indecipherable inscriptions. The Smithsonian Institution even put a small piece of the wall on display until 1902, when they decided to remove it. Now, the wall isn't even considered a piece of archaeological history by most scientists. Those who see it as a piece of history simply say it was buried 4,000 years ago by the Native Americans, and that's the end of the discussion. Yet there are some researchers who have seen the hieroglyphics and believe them to be old Hebrew inscriptions. This would make the wall not a Cherokee relic, but one of ancient Israel. If this is true, that means the wall was built by a pre-flood society with direct ties to the Holy Land on the other side of the world. It seems like quite the stretch, though, and there doesn't seem to be much scientific interest. Number 3. The Yonaguni Monument The Yonaguni Monument was discovered in the 1980s by a scuba diver who was looking for hammerhead sharks off the coast of Japan. The monument is enormous, covering an area of over 180 feet by 150 feet. It appears to be a sunken pyramid. The walls are smooth with various tiers climbing up to the top. Every single thing about this monument screams out ancient society. But mainstream scientists think it is just a natural formation. It's sitting on the floor of the ocean at a depth of around 100 feet. Nobody knows who built this monument, if it is one, or how long it's been down there. The government of Japan is not doing any kind of research, even though more recently, divers have discovered stone tools, ceramics, and what looks like other structures, and even roads. Some believe it was part of the lost continent of Mu, perhaps even Atlantis. Whatever it is, the Yonaguni Monument could be more evidence of pre-flood nations that were wiped out with their cities lost underwater. Number 2. The Pre-Human Civilization The Silurian hypothesis suggests that long before human beings evolved, there was a different civilization living on the planet. This would be the ultimate antediluvian society, a race of pre-humans who came not thousands, but millions of years before us. Some even believe there could have been a race of humans who evolved, went extinct, and then evolved again later into us. Gavin Schmidt, the director of NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies, asked, how do you know we're the only time there's been a civilization on our own planet? As reported in The Atlantic, when it comes to direct evidence of an industrial civilization, things like cities, factories, and roads, the geologic record doesn't go past what's called the Quaternary Period, 2.6 million years ago. If we are going back this far, we are not talking about humans. It could be an ancient species that rose to civilization, but even if an industrial civilization lasted only 100,000 years, 500 times longer than ours, there would be no evidence of it left. There is little evidence that this hypothesis could be correct, but there are scientific facts that say it could be possible. The question is, what impact or signs would they have left? And what will be left of our civilization millions of years from now? Number 1. Genetic Entropy 
Genetic entropy is a terrifying subject. It's a fringe theory that says genetic mutations in human beings are slowly accumulating until we all go extinct. It was a theory first proposed by a man named Joseph Mueller in 1932. People living in the pre-flood world supposedly lived up to 10 times longer than we do today, and this all has to do with so-called genetic entropy. Starting at the top, Adam lived for 930 years. Noah then lived for a whopping 960 years. But after these guys, Abraham lived for 170 years, and by the time Moses came around, he only lived to be 120. Here's where this gets interesting. The rate of decay here is exponential, with a curve off by only a few fractions of a percentage point. In scientific terms, whoever wrote Genesis must have had a very sophisticated understanding of numbers and mathematics. Either that, or they were reporting legitimate facts. It might seem ridiculous to even entertain the notion that people could live for 960 years, but we just don't know what happened way back then. The theory is that in the pre-flood days, humans had no genetic issues that caused them to get sick and old. After the flood, that all changed. People lived too long, and it caused too many problems. And so the mutations came, and we lived shorter and shorter lives until the medieval days, when many people only lived to be around 30. Now it's going back up because of our medical technology, not really because of our genetics. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon for another shocking video. Bye!